Hello and welcome to the latest in our video and that series of video analysis lessons and deep dives into Renaissance history. And what we're doing today is in our ongoing series is looking at some of the Renaissance men. And we're starting off with, of course, the man himself, Leonardo da Vinci. The first ideal Renaissance man, the first universal man, he seemed to be able to do it all. He was a painter, he was a sculptor, he was a scientist. What he is, is he's the man that immediately comes to mind when you think of the word renaissance so what we're going to look at today and examine is what he did in from 1452 to 1519 and why it had such a lasting impact on world history and technology let's take a deep dive shall we so what you may have remembered from our other videos that we had was galileo and galileo's discoveries brought him into conflict with the church we know his most famous scientific discovery about the telescope and how through his telescope he was able to discover that the sun didn't revolve around the earth but the other way around. And what the Catholic Church did to him, how they treated him horribly and not apologising to him about it until the 1990s after he was long, long dead. So in today's video lecture, what we're going to look at is we're going to learn about the training of da Vinci. We're going to look at his famous paintings like the Virgin of the Rocks, the Mona Lisa herself, the Last Supper. And then as our kind of revision work, we're going to look at our keywords. And again, because this isn't just a history lesson, it's also kind of an art appreciation and it's so culturally significant, it allows you to reflect and think on your own favourite painting by da Vinci. And why is that? So the key words we use here is somato, which we mentioned in our change in art and, art and architecture video. Somato is an Italian for smoky that blended so there's no harsh outlines or edges in a painting. And again, the key word, he's the universal man. He seemed to be able to do it all. So I'm going to allow you to pause the video and just before we go on, just make a couple of mental notes or if you have a pen and paper at hand and you're jotting this down, what words do you associate with Leonardo da Vinci? Now, that term the universal man. So Leonardo da Vinci was undoubtedly one of the greatest geniuses of the Renaissance. He was a marvellous painter and inventor. Leonardo was born in 1452 in Vinci near Florence. That's where he got his name. So the word da in da Vinci means of. So he's Leonardo of Florence, or Leonardo of Vinci, the town of Florence. Leonardo's father wanted him to become a lawyer, but Leonardo was interested in painting. At 15 years of age, he was apprenticed to Verrocchio, a leading Florentine artist, and he learned to paint. It soon became clear that Leonardo was better than his master. So... The ideal Renaissance person would be this universal man or woman, this person who's, you know, excellent at a wide range of activities, not just one, that you were a dilettante in a way, that you were able to dip into everything, and that was art, science, music, and literature. Da Vinci was seen as this ideal man, this universal man, personified, this all-round genius. So... Verrocchio learnt, taught him how to draw, to prepare colours and varnishes and to sculpt. We have an idea about his apprenticeship with the idea of the apprenticeship of Christ. We know he was an inquisitive mind from his notebooks that are left behind. And just have a look there, dear viewer. We see animals, we see fruit, we see anatomy, we see the body. We see a precursor to the plane with his flying machines. We see a crossbow, a very common weapon today. So that he really was one of the most inquisitive minds around. And that was the key to Renaissance, that you had these inquisitive minds who weren't afraid to ask questions. Now, the Virgin of the Rocks here we're going to have a look at. This painting shows the Virgin Mary with the baby Jesus, with John the Baptist, and an angel. The angel is meant to show da Vinci's ideal woman and what she would look like. And again, at the time, a lot of debate was whether people agreed she was beautiful or not. So... Da Vinci's patron here was the ruler of Milan, the Forza family, who we mentioned in our introduction video. It was done on canvas, again a new development that we talked about, and it had that smato, that smoky technique. The figures are blurred, the edges are smudged, everything looks natural and blended in. And again, the importance of nature in the background. That's the background, that's the foreground, and just the characters themselves are in the centre and everything else surrounds them. Arguably his most famous painting by the Mona Lisa is The Last Supper. You can see perspective in this painting. The Last Supper itself is seen to be based off a dining room of a monastery in Milan. It's an experimental fresco. 
with oil, tempura, and stone. The paint peeled off quickly, and you can see the shock on the apostles' faces as Jesus is announcing his coming betrayal. The moment that he's turned on. Some critics would suggest that the figure sitting at Jesus' right hand is not a man at all, but it's actually Mary Magdalene. So even today, we're unsure of whether it's a man or a woman. And again, the detail of all the apostles there, individualized, that you can tell who's who, and just the shock and the awe that comes in with that. And perhaps the one you've all been waiting to learn about, the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. The scenery in this background is typical of a Renaissance painting. She's 30 inches tall. She's 21 inches wide. It took over two years to paint. Many believe it's a portrait of a merchant or a portrait of a merchant and it's best seen in the Louvre in Paris. And one of the stories is that it was a self-portrait by da Vinci that he painted over himself. But you read into that as you will. Da Vinci is used today in marketing for just about every company and every type of industry that you could think of. So I suppose if you're revising this for your exams, you have to write to 8 to 10 lines at least on Da Vinci and his paintings. Now before we go on, let's do a recap on what we need to know. Where is Leonardo from? How was he trained? What do we mean when we say the Renaissance Universal Man? And what is Somato? So moving on going forward, we're going to learn about Da Vinci's notebooks. We're going to focus on a study of astronomy, anatomy, engineering. Okay, so... We also know that after Florence became involved in war, Leonardo moved to Milan. That's where he painted the Last Supper on the wall of a convent church. It was a fresco, but Leonardo was trying out a new recipe for making the paint. It didn't work. Soon after the picture was done, the paint began to peel away. You can see this when we looked at the painting. Leonardo was the first artist to use Sonata, and you can see it in his most famous picture, the Mona Lisa. Again, is it Da Vinci or is it the woman Lisa Giraldini who we say it's about? Or who we've been told about. Again, before we go back, or before we move on, is it sadness? Is it happiness in our ways? Who knows? He also painted the Virgin of the Rocks, which shows his love of nature. Now, when Leonardo was writing his notebooks, we have to look at these key words. Mirror writing, anatomy, geology, and astronomy. So in his studies of astronomy, geology, engineering, and anatomy, recording all these notebooks, so 7,000 pages of these notes still exist, who knows if there was more. When Leonardo wrote in his notebooks, he used mirror writing. That is basically writing from right to left rather than the other way around. For that reason, no one read his notes until many years after his death. Today, we have over 5,000 pages of his notebooks. They contain diagrams of machines as well as notes on botany, which is the study of flowers, geology and engineering. In Milan, Leonardo worked for the Duke of Milan. He invented several weapons of war for the Duke, such as a tank and a cannon. His notebooks were full of new ideas, including designs for a helicopter, a submarine, and a parachute. But Forza was not interested in these and would not give him any funding for them. Leonardo and people. So, if he saw an interesting face on the street, he would draw it in his notebook. Sometimes he followed the person home so that he could finish the drawing. He dissected more than 30 bodies of men and women in order to study the human form more closely. Leonardo contributed more to medical science than we realize. Leonardo also had a great interest in nature, plants and animals. He made great discoveries. He worked out how rocks were formed and how to tell the age of a tree by counting the rings. So there's his tank, some of the weapons such as the submarine, the military tank, the crossbow that we were talking about, and also the flying machine that the Wright brothers would base on their first plane, inventing flight and commercial air travel. So that he had these ideas of aerodynamics, he was a man ahead of his time. Freud described him as the man who awoke too early in darkness while the others were still asleep. Now, Leonardo's last years, when a French army captured Milan, Leonardo had to leave. He went to Florence and Rome, but younger artists such as Michelangelo and Raphael were going to become more popular than he was then. The King of France invited Leonardo to France to work for him, and he died there three years later in 1519. That concludes today's episode on Leonardo da Vinci. Thank you for listening, guys, and I'll be back with another episode real soon. Goodbye.